Welcome to episode 43 of Stage Worthy. I'm your host, Phil Rickaby. Stage Worthy is a podcast about people in Canadian theatre. On Stage Worthy, I talk to theatre makers in Canada about their journey, about theatre in general, and wherever else the conversation might take us. If you'd like to be a guest on Stage Worthy or just want to drop me a line, you can find Stage Worthy on Facebook and Twitter at Stage Worthy Pod, and you can find the website at stageworthypodcast.com. If you enjoy the podcast, I hope you'll subscribe on iTunes or Google Music or whatever podcast app you use and consider leaving a comment or rating. My guests are Kat Letwin, Michael Musi, and Kat Sandler talking about Theatre Brouhaha's upcoming play Late Night, performing at Moses Nimer Zoomerplex in Toronto. Moosey like a moose. Like, moosey like a moose. And Kat Lightman. Yeah. Thank you so much for, for, for coming on. This is, you're rehearsing Late Night. That's right. That's Kat Sandler's new show. Mm-hmm. And you're rehearsing it in an act, like, is this a, happening in an actual TV studio? Yes. Yeah. 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 So they actually still shoot, they shoot like some live news segments. Yep. They shoot other programs that I don't know of. There's one called, uh, I think, was it uh, Music Shul? I uh, saw I saw yes, uh, the correct. cover Did you say for that. The show is called Music Shul. Not this one that okay, we're okay, doing. Okay. I mean, actually, I kind of wish, wish we were this show. I wish it was called Music Shul. Not this show, but the, the like, they yes. do have one. I mean, they, there was like the like the title card for it was all, all over the mm. different uh, uh, TV screens around the studio, and mm-hmm. I was just like, oh, I'm gonna check that out. Yeah, I'm not. Uh, <laughs> nope. <laughs> that's uh, that's because of who you are as a person. A person Fundamentally yeah. flawed. Thank yeah, you. You're welcome. <laughs> um, so, what is it like rehearsing? A play in a TV studio. Well, it's it's odd. Yeah. Actually, it's well, I odd. mean, the play itself takes place in a TV studio, so I think it's a big blessing that we get to use this space because mm-hmm. a lot of times uh, when you rehearse a play, you do it in a rehearsal hall, and then you get to the theater, and it's just a stage. So the 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 shift to, from the rehearsal space to the the theater is not mm-hmm. so jarring. Jarring. Yeah. Whereas if we didn't get to see this space at all, I think it would be terrifying because yeah. there's so much to work with. It would, it would be uh, so much more overwhelming, uh, you know, for me personally, just seeing all the different cameras and like types of equipment and knowing that it's all going to be moving around uh, to be able to really get a, a like a, a physically intimate knowledge of the space so that when, you know, the cameras are, are, are zooming about the old bodies in the space, <laughs> that I, I won't immediately Don't panic. Do that. Don't what? No. <laughs> What I you know what I like about you, yeah, uh, Michael Musi. Tell me. Uh, I like that um, that you care about uh, who I am and how I present myself <laughs> to the world. He's great. great. He's always jumping in and just telling yeah, me how stop terrible talking, stop I am. Talking. See, stop talking. he's doing it again. Um, but yeah, it's it's uh, it's very uh, important. Mm-hmm. It's interesting in the rehearsal uh, uh, space here, mm-hmm. being in the TV studio, hearing how the acoustics work differently, yeah. mm-hmm. um, and then also be practicing um, with the parts that were mic'd uh, live for it and the parts where we're not. So mm-hmm. also the idea of having to um, uh, use different most of like uh, volume control mm-hmm. and uh, and the the face that you're making for TV versus the face you're making for the theatrical audience um, that's mm-hmm. that's in the room. It so really is like we're pre- we're rehearsing to uh, a play and a TV segment. Yeah, so that's it, it, what it is. Yeah, much is exactly what it is. We're also very aware that we're in a room with hundreds of thousands of dollars of equipment <laughs> and we're all dumb actors who are like let's try this and then we're like but if i try that and break something no one will ever hire me no no never i'll, I'll owe so much money that i'll never be able to pay because i'm an actor um and that's how <laughs> that's how my life will be after this moment yeah. um yeah yeah uh it's odd because you know we did another cat sandler play together mm-hmm. a couple years ago called retreat and we were rehearsing in this basement space, it's like a windowless, clockless yes. basement space yes. for for many, 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 many hours many a day. Hours a day. <laughs> um, but it was somehow more comfortable because, yeah, you could just like flail around and yeah. really explore the whole space because you like there's water stains everywhere and there's nothing worth a whole lot of money stored mm-hmm. down there. So it's like cool. I can just like punch kick my way toward my character, which is what we did. Which is exactly yeah, what, we is what we did. It was a very karate based <laughs> process. Um, so this show, from 
the way you're describing it, it the audience in the space will be watching you in, on a play, but also will there be parts that are broadcast to them live? Yeah, exactly. yeah, they'll be they'll be uh, signing release uh, forms oh, um, okay. because they'll and also appear. Is yeah. it actually being broadcast, or is it? It is. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, we're, not, we're, we're right. not live. No, okay. but but we are shooting. There's going to be uh, a few days of shooting where they're shooting the whole performance and a lot uh, audience reactions, and it's going to be broadcast on Vision TV. <laughs> there are so <laughs> many so many dick jokes <laughs> for yeah. for Vision TV. Sorry, Vision. Is that, no. Is that, is that, is Vision TV still a religious program? Because I think it's it some. I think they have some. They have Music Shul. But they have Music Shul. <laughs> they have okay, music okay. Shul. That's, that's I do recall um, uh, when I lived with the, this this former roommate of mine. Uh, yo, Aaron Telling me if you're listening to this, shout out to you. Um, mm-hmm. And she had cable for a bit, and we would love just watching so many reruns of like Seventh Heaven on Vision TV. So for me, that's what that is. Yeah. 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 Are so we Seventh Heaven? Right we're no, no, no. We're the no, Ninth we're Circle of Hell. Got it. <laughs> so that's what we are. I um, yeah. So that's. But uh, going back to your question, the, the the thing you were saying. Yeah, let's, let's, let's do this. Hold hands. Do we hold hands while we do sure. this? Yeah. <laughs> the thing that you were saying about the audience. Um, the cool part as well for the audience, because it's so different for us as well, we're doing the theater and we're doing the TV shows, it's the same for them, whereas the audience, I think, will also be like, am I reacting now as a TV audience, which is the laugh untold, or, mm-hmm. and then when can I be a theater audience where I could laugh where I decide it's funny, right? Yeah. So I think that's going to be really fun for them to play with as well. Is there a concern that, because that, I'm, I'm assuming that there's an applause sign that will go on for those. Right, Yeah. Audiences have troubles making shifts sometimes. Like, I've done theater that's in the style of silent film, and because the actors aren't making noise, sometimes the audience feels like they can't make noise. Right. And so sometimes it, it, it's almost like once they get into one headspace, it's hard to break them out. Well, I think. Luckily for us, we're screaming the whole time. Yeah, we're just screaming. <laughs> I think, like, well, my, so my character is I play an intern who um, has to take everyone's. Job, so I end up being the audience uh, warm upper, warm upper, War, warmer upper, warmer, warmer upper. upper guy, yeah, uh, as yeah. well as like the the cue card guy and stuff like that. And so I think my job in the beginning is very much gonna is very much gonna be uh, letting the audience know kind of what we need from them and mm. what will help out. And I yeah. think once that first little segment happens, I think people will catch on. Cool. Yeah. Uh, and then we're just hoping it goes well. We don't know. We have no idea. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, who Who knows? Yeah. Not us. Not it's us. I don't know. It's an interesting experiment to think about um, a show. Well, for one thing, I mean, it's one thing to write a show that's set in a, a play that's set in a TV studio. Mm-hmm. Entirely different to actually get to do it in a TV studio. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, th- that's part of what is uh, so delightful and so uh, nebulous, I suppose. <laughs> um, like, as you said, it's an experiment. We, we don't know how it's going to go, but um, uh, Kat Sandler, not Kat, you, not, not me. You don't talk to I, I, I don't. the third person. <laughs> Kat Lewin has stopped doing that. Oh, uh, anyway. I'm doing it again. I'm doing it again. It's terrible. Oh, go to my therapist and talk about it. It's fine. Um, uh, so, so uh, Kat Sandler has been calling it immersive point uh, five. Yes. Where, um, you know, we'll, we'll have kind of like a pre-show setup where there's a holding space for the audience and, you know, uh, much like when you're going to see a taping of like a, a late show. Mm-hmm. Um There'll be all these things around you. You, know, you can watch, like you know, like posters from, uh, you know, the uh, late night or like early late night with Marty O'Malley um, uh, stuff about my character who's uh, taking over for uh, uh, taking over Marty's seat. Um, so they get the feeling and the experience of of waiting in line for uh, really being in a television studio. So when they go in, it's like, oh yes, this is exactly what this world is. And I think what the real fun and the real joy and the real experiment will be is uh, how the audience feels and shifts when we start from this very structured beginning, Mm -hmm. uh, right from the holding area to uh, uh, Michael starting off and and warming up and having the applause side and all that. And much, uh, much like what happens in the show as, as, as the show uh, breaks down as, as what this, this, live final broadcast for Marty O'Malley is supposed to be as it starts going off the rails then the audience is allowed to kind of follow that uh-huh. train wreck and they'll find their own rhythm and mm-hmm. their own comfort and I yeah. firmly believe in it, trusting in the audience and both the like um, the, the emotional intelligence and the I was going to say regular intelligence. You know, intelligence, intelligence. Uh-huh. Yeah, intelligence. yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, brain, brain book smarts. Um, I think they'll be able to go with it. Um, 
uh, we trust that they'll trust us and we trust them. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, it's like, all right, let's all take mm -hmm. each other's hands and uh, fl fly off the edge of this cliff together, right guys? And also, you know, it can very much be very different shows every night where if mm -hmm. we have an audience that is, you know, very rowdy and really joins in and the audience that is terrified about what's going on. I mean, that's yeah. going to be so fun to play with as well. And we kind of have that freedom. I mean, we're, we're on script, but I think we can play with the vibes that we're getting. And I think yeah. that'll be really cool. You'll have, I mean, you get that in, in regular theater. So right, you know, exactly. So yeah. It doesn't have to be about the immersive experience. Mm -hmm. um, so you guys have done, have done Cat Sandler plays, or one Cat Sandler play before. Mm -hmm. Together, and then you also yeah. did Liver. I did another one as yeah. well, Which yeah. Which one did you do? I did uh, Liver after I did Retreat okay. with uh, with Cat uh, Letwin. <laughs> that's, that's you. Oh, man, that's funny. Cat yeah, Letwin likes that. You were so good in that. Oh, my God, thank you. You were awful. Thank you. Awfully oh, my funny. God, thank you so Oh, I see what you did. <laughs> we're having a ball. Oh, we're friends. <laughs> and, um... In terms of uh, getting in, starting in theater, when when did you each of you decide that theater was something you wanted to do? Do you remember when you started acting or doing theater? Yes, yes, I remember it very clearly. Um, so it was uh, I, I did a summer drama camp with Theater Brantford because I, I uh, grew up in Brantford, Ontario, and uh, they had the camp going on at the Sanderson Center, which is this beautiful proscenium, dates back to 1919, gorgeous theater. And we were putting on a production of Beauty and the Beast. So they were using like the kids and teens from uh, the camp and like mounting this production on this gorgeous stage. And I remember also I was like nine and I was cast as the old woman. Mm. And I was like, mm. ah, mm. that's because of my gravitas, obviously. Mm. I'm nine. <laughs> um, and I remember just, just not. Is that what you sounded like when you were nine? Yeah, I was a heavy smoker when I was nine. <laughs> <Got> it. <laughs> it. it was a real bad, like, pack and a half day nice, habit for nice, nine year old nice. me. Um, it's Brantford, so. Yeah, who cares? Uh, yeah, hanging out at the Delta Bingo, just smoking as a nine year old. Anywho, so we're on stage, and I just remember thinking to myself, like, I have never felt anything like this before. This, 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 this pure feeling of electricity, the idea of coming out, making character choices, being in the moment, f not so much seeing, but feeling the audience and, and feeling that energy and feeling the way that the show can change every night that we do it. And then the, uh, like for some reason, all the cool teens, uh, when they were backstage would eat these like raw potatoes, like they were props and I, and I got to eat the potatoes with them and I was just like, oh, I'm a cool kid. Uh, this is amazing. And I just remember feeling like I, 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 I knew that's what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. Like, it was just locked mm -hmm. in. It was just like, yeah, this is it. I've, I've never felt so much love, and I have never felt so much joy. And everything else that I had done up to that point just felt fine, felt good. Mm -hmm. But this felt transcendent. Did, did you have a sense of, of, of acting or anything before you went to that summer uh, program? Or I did am... your parents just sort of throw you into it as something? Yeah, they physically threw me okay, uh, that's yeah. Good, that's good. Yeah, into yeah, it. Some people, some people talk. Well, they wanted to yeah. toughen me up, and I think it worked. Um, so much talk about Are you me. crying? No, I'm not. I'm laughing at the memories of joy. Um, no, uh, I, I mean, in the sense that I had seen like some like kids' plays before, mm -hmm. and um, I, I enjoyed like acting stuff out at home with my brother. Like it, it was very, I loved um, making up stories and um, uh, writing and play acting and all that kind of stuff. So it just it seemed some, like something that I'd like to do and something I'd like to try. Mm -hmm. And yeah, like I, I didn't know I would love it that much, but it was one of those kind of feelings. Where I'm like, I think, I think I might quite like this. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to give it, give it the old college try. And then, uh, yeah, I've been, doing it ever since basically how long between at what point did you realize that it was a thing that you could do as a living um i guess in high school um i was uh there was one uh, when i was in grade nine i was doing uh three plays at once uh, i was doing um a production for the sears drama festival uh, I was in rehearsals for a uh, community production of The Crucible, and then I was also going to gearing up for rehearsals for, like, It's Christmas, Charlie Brown, also at the Sanderson Center. And uh, 
again, like I, I'd, I'd feel that joy, and then I'd also feel myself getting better. And I would, you know, not that like we had a lot of like reviews coming in mm -hmm. or anything, but I got a lot of very positive feedback. And when I was in my drama classes in high school too, like I, I, I just I found myself being able to dive into it in a way that I either chose not to or just didn't want to with my other classes. Mm -hmm. And uh, in grade 12, I'd, uh, I'd written a play uh, called Death is a Canadian for the Sears Drama Festival. And it, it got a lot of uh, momentum and uh, it won some awards and it was picked up for uh, a couple festivals. And I'd been applying to a bunch of schools mm -hmm. and I had auditioned for some uh, like acting conservatories and like I was, I was getting into all of them and I was getting scholarships for them as well. And I thought, okay, you know, my parents were very supportive. They're like, well, if this is something that you really want to study, then that's totally fine. But just get a degree. So in case it doesn't work out, because it probably won't not, because we don't think you're good and we don't love you, but it probably won't, um, you know, you'll, you'll be prepared. But I don't know. In the back of my head, I thought, like, no, I understand how much work it is. I, I get it. It's, it's a grind. It requires strength of both, uh, you know, spirit and conviction. Um, and I, I think I have that and it means enough to me and it's important enough to me that I will make it work because if I don't, I, I can't see myself ever really being happy. Mm. So, um, yeah, it, it was the yeah. sense of like, oh, I can do this because I have to, because if I don't, you'd be miserable. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. Michael, your, your, your same sort of question to you, when did you start performing or doing um, well when I was I was I think I was eight years old and my cousin was in a show at his high school called the blue and gold review they did it every year and it was like it was this really like stupid variety show where they would like write the script and then they'd say something like uh, they'd end the, 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 the last line with like a, a song title and then it'd go dark and then someone would be singing that song and then it'd go back. It was a really weird show. But I remember watching it and being, I was like eight years old and I was like, what the hell is this? Like, <laughs> what the hell? But like in a good way. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, what the hell is this? And I remember all my cousins were sleeping and I was just like, what the hell is going on? Why are people doing this on stage? This is the best. And I went home and I remember like writing down what I remembered was the play and performing it in my basement. And then, uh, <laughs> yeah, and I was eight, and I remember telling my mom, like, I'm going to that high school. I don't care what's going on. I'm going to that high school. I'm going to be in that show. And I did. And I remember I, I went to that high school, and just for it to be in those blue and gold reviews, which at the time was like Broadway. For of me. course, yeah. I was like, right. I need, I, and when I got there, I was like, I've made it, you know? And, uh, and, I, and I did the shows, and it was never, it, it's kind of like what Kat was saying, it was never, not an it was never an option to not do it mm. it was yeah um, yeah the second i saw that i 100 percent knew right away it, it wasn't even something that i really talked about it was just like mm. oh well just so you know i'm gonna be an actor now everybody yep. and um my parents were insanely supportive my dad is like super uh he's just like a farmer from turkey and uh, and he was like he uh, you would think that he'd be like no be a doctor you know yeah, yeah. and he was like maybe because i was not good at school but he was like <laughs> he was like yeah totally and my mom was like one hundo p so then uh one hundo p yeah my mom, mom was really slangy right yeah, uh, yeah. And, <laughs> uh and uh yeah and then um after high school i went to uh cjep in montreal for a couple years and then i got into a school in new york went there and then moved to Toronto and Kat was actually the first person I ever auditioned for mm -hmm. when I got to Toronto. I just found her on Kijiji right. and I auditioned yep. and I remembered thinking, oh my God, like Toronto playwrights are insanely talented. And then I realized that she was very rare. Burn on very, Toronto very Not, you, know, you know what I'm everyone. saying? <laughs> Shut up. Shut up. No, I'm just saying like, you know, uh, like I, I saw, I, when I read her script, I was like, this is incredible. I'm, I'm like so excited to see what else is out there. And I quickly found out that Kat was insanely special. Mm -hmm. Like her style of writing was, it just resonated so much with me. I thought it was so amazing yeah. and so funny and so quick and witty. It's like and, if uh, Mamet wasn't a piece of shit. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yes. 
and was a obnoxious foodie. Like Kat's a big obnoxious foodie, yes, like I am. And so I just I, anyway. So we yeah, she wrote, she wrote this play and I auditioned and I didn't get it. I did not get it. And I went to go see the play and sat in my chair and was like, Bleh. and my, then uh, you the interface. Do you remember which which play that was? That that, that was Love, Sex, Money. It was okay, her first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was her first play that she did outside yeah. of, out, out of school. I think. Yes. Yeah, I think so. Uh huh. And yeah. uh, and Danny Paget got it, and I was like. I love Danny now, but at the time I was like, I hate that piece of garbage. Right. Uh, and like, then you know, uh, like a tire fire of a human. Yeah. Yuck. And then I literally auditioned for every single one of her plays, mm. and did. And I remember every time she'd, get, I'd get a call from her, I'm like, this is it, and she'd be like, Babe, it's not this one. I, it's not this one, but I promise you, it's gonna be one. I promise you. And I was like, Yeah, I don't care, I don't care. And I'd hang up and be like, No. Uh, and then finally, when I got retreat. Um, like, it was just like, like, like Kat was saying, we were in a stupid basement, the darkest, dis- most disgusting basement. Moldy, smelly. And it was like the time of my life. I loved it. We spent, like, we had 14 hour days sometimes yeah. in that basement uh, with no windows and tiny little breaks because we were all in our 20s, just like, we don't, we just want to do this. We just want to make this good. We don't, yeah. we, and she'd be like, I think, are you guys tired? We're like, no, nope. no, 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 let's keep doing it. And I mean, there are like, anytime we'd stop to like eat, like there are so many photos of us just like sprawled out on top of each other, like puppies, Yeah, you know, yeah. or just like, oh God, well, like yeah. eating things from a can. Like, it's great. Like we also had, like puppies. But yeah. We had the time of our lives and we yeah. all knew that this was something so special yeah. and that mm-hmm. this wasn't something that we would get the chance to do. With so many other people. Yeah. Like, because it was nice because, uh, and with this process too, there's this feeling of like, okay, we have a script and uh, we have, uh, uh, oh, Kat Oh, Sandler Kat Sandler now. just walked right in. Uh, just, just when we're saying so many nice things. Anyway. Yeah, let's yes. stop. Let's so stop. here's another reason why she's a piece of garbage. <laughs> garbage. Can we swear on this or no? Absolutely. It's no secret to you. Penis. <laughs> Of all the things Sorry, you it's say. in the play. Okay. Okay. Tampon. <laughs> Tampon. <laughs> There's um, going to be one person who's listening and they're hearing all this other than just you whispering tampon yeah. into the microphone. You, is that what you whispered? It's important for my personal <laughs> politics. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, what were you saying? Yeah, um, yeah. The the fuel of the the process. Um, well, let me explain your process to you again. Yeah. Okay, no problem. Yeah, I got it. It's like, um, it, well, it's not it's not collective creation because the script is already there. The idea is there. Um, uh, there is like the clear like arc, and uh, you have your characters. You're going into it. That's totally great. But then it becomes this kind of hybrid of working on your feet and then uh, working in a writer's room where we're going through what Kat has brought to us and we're going, like in the, for, for late night, it was uh, especially a lot of table work. We're going like joke by joke, line by line. Mm-hmm. What is it that we can lose? What is it that we really mean? Okay, mm-hmm. well, and then you figure out the character so much more intimately that way so that when you, we are on our feet um, and we're still like making changes to the script, we're still making cuts and... Um, we're adding things or, or realizing there are uh, better things we can say or better ways to say that better thing that we want to say. Um, so you, your, your hands, you know, your hands are really in the dirt on it. Like mm-hmm. you're, you're, you're just so ensconced. Um, mm-hmm. And when everything is shifting and, and, sh- and shaping itself, you're shifting and shaping with it. Um, so suddenly it's not necessarily that the, the lines are living in yourself, but this, the idea and the soul of everything behind the lines is there. And then it's so much easier to, to keep going with mm-hmm. this like fly by the seat of your pants script changes and all these rewrites. And it mm-hmm. doesn't feel that crazy because it's just like, of course, this is, this is how this needs to find itself. This is like a sense of like everything is there that needs to be there, but you're chipping away until you find like the... You know, like the, the the dinosaur skeleton. We're paleontologists now. This is a very mixed metaphor. That's beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Can I offer you an empty cup, Kat? <laughs> there you go. Thank you. Um, and another thing about the way that Cat works, um, which is the best as an actor, is that um, you have you, you you. She always lets you. Um, bring up ideas and bring up suggestions Mm -hmm. and she's always open to those things and she always also knows when there's like I like I said this is my third play and I've done two plays and there was not a single line in any of those plays that I didn't enjoy saying Mm -hmm. because and I think she she has such a great she she has such great um 
uh, I don't know what that stupid word is, but she knows. She <laughs> just can tell when there's something that's just not sitting right. Is it and genius? She, uh, no, it's no, uh, God, no. God, no, uh, no, 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 never no, described no, no, it that no, way. Definitely not. No, that. Absolutely not. Uh, and she'd be like, "Great." And she, I remember she, she said this a lot in retreat. Was like um, instinct. Was okay. Uh, <laughs> she said a lot. Was like, if you don't like something, just give, just like bring it up. Like just, just don't say I don't like this. Give me a suggestion. And she would, and she'd be like, okay. And if she liked it, she'd say, try it. And she's like, I, I, half the time in the rehearsal room is try it. Try it. Give it a shot. Yeah. Let's try it. And then sometimes you'll try it, and she'll be like, no. And then no. you, well, it means like something garbage. you feel in your head, and you're just like, yeah, this is going to be so good. And she's like, try it. I'm like, yeah, try it. And, yeah. Oh, uh, no, no. I'm oh, so sorry no. I did that. Yeah, I know. And sometimes you feel so confident. You're like, Kat, I should definitely say, um, there's the moon. <laughs> and then she'd be like, I don't know. I'm like, Kat, I need to say it. She'd like, try it. And I'd say, there's the moon. And right away, I'd be like, yeah, no, there's no, that's not going to work. The moon is not there. The moon's not there. What's it's the no moon. Yeah. yeah. Kat, can I ask you, Kat Sandler, yeah. I have two cats in the room, Kat Sandler, yeah. can I ask you about um, how the production of, of, of Late Night came about? Yeah. Um, we, I met Moses. Um, I don't know, maybe a year and a half, two years ago at a screening of Cockfight when we made the film. Maybe he filmed it for TV. And we met, I was very drunk. Uh, so he met me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then we just kind of stayed in touch and, and started hanging out a little bit. And uh, I had written this play for the 24 hour play contest at Fringe in 2015. And then when I first came and visited, I was visiting the, the TV museum. Moses has a yeah. TV museum here. It's crazy. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, and I went into the space and I was like, oh, geez, like, this is, I have a show that will work so well here. And then we just didn't do anything of it. He was like, yeah, you can do it here. I was like, that's great. And then I just didn't do it. And he was like, why aren't you, why aren't you doing it? And I was like, we don't have any money. <laughs> he was like, well, I'll, I'll produce it. So, uh, nice. so nice. That's, that's pretty much it. Yeah. Yeah. So we kind of, uh, I made a lot of talks about the script and about um, kind of how it related. Because he's like the face of Zoomer. Yeah. Because his whole business, his empire is built on this, this generation. Uh, so we, we had a lot of, of chats about how that would inform kind of the arguments we plug in. It's been really cool. He's a cool dude. Did did you get input on the way the television works? I mean, I, we're, now I'm getting that yeah. from his team, mm-hmm. like the, the the team that's going to be involved in the actual production. Like we met with the sound guy today. Like the, like we don't have a set designer or a lighting designer for this. It's going to be there. They're going to design the team. Mm-hmm. So um, yeah, I think the next tech week is going to be probably the most crazy tech week of my life. Mm-hmm. Well, with this tech week, you're mixing like theater and television. Well, they're going to be a bunch of people. They're going to film it five, uh, like three to five times for television in the final week of performance. So that'll be a whole set of people that aren't on site previous to that. Mm. And then for our actual regular shows, there'll be a couple camera people running around too mm. that'll be um, filming but not capturing. And then we'll be projecting that onto the screens around the room. Do you see the room? I didn't get to see the room. No, no, it's, it, no, no it's it's armored. that's all right. <laughs> I think I saw some lights glowing yeah. from from the door. Um, it's as soon as I heard about about this, I thought this is fucking perfect. Like, yeah. To do to do a show about a television show in a television yeah. studio. It almost like, makes too much sense. It makes sense. Yeah. You, you know, it does make too much sense. I would say. Excellent. Yes, um, but I think. The idea, it's an immersive in a way that we don't get. We've been calling it immersive 25. Oh, we talked we about this already, yeah. Sandler. Oh, sorry. It's actually Tom McGee's thing. He's going to be really mad at me. Tom, yeah. thank you. Immersive 0.5. You should just take it. Tom, he's, he'll be cool with it. Yeah. If you just say that you can't. Right, you'll be cool with it, right, Tom? Thanks. Thanks, Tom. Thanks, Tom. Love you. Yeah, because it's... In a lot of other, in a lot of other spots, you would be doing this play... And basically, the audience would have to imagine the yeah. television aspect. Yeah. But now it's it's. And you still have to imagine quite mm-hmm. a lot. Like <laughs> there's not, it's not perfect, but it is a it is a really cool blueprint for what mm-hmm. could be even bigger. I think as a, as mm-hmm. an idea, depending on how much you wanted to invest. Like I mean, they're invest, they're trusting us with a lot. Mm-hmm. Like and I mean, we're really mm-hmm. just these scamps running around like, <laughs> in the corporate office and stealing their copy. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. We're like, you curate, okay. Yeah. Today. Or that one time uh, uh, Siobhan came by with like leftover pizza yeah. from some other meeting and I was just like, oh my god, this is eating us. This place is off the hook. Yeah, but I think it's, um, I, think, I think it will be cool. I mean, even if we just did it in the studio with, mm-hmm. you know, with just theater lights and still think it would be cool. Yeah. And, yeah. 
Yeah. If even a quarter of what I'm imagining happens, it'll be double cool. It'll be super cool. Yeah. Even today, with just the sound design, just playing that like mm -hmm. that typical kind of late night talk show music yeah. in between commercials, looking at the space while hearing that music, I was like, what the fuck is going on? Yeah. It's yeah. so yeah. cool. Yeah. It's so cool. Just, just minds exploding. Yeah. I know, I know. It's like, oh, wow. Yeah. It's so real. I so badly want to see this show. Yeah, I can't yeah. wait to, to see this show. You're in it, Oh, Kat. shit. <laughs> uh, okay, that makes sense. That's why I've been here so much. <laughs> Sorry. No, no, no. That's what I want. Then I'm not sorry. Right. You guys talk to me a lot of time. Great. It's a good interview if I'm not talking. Perf. Um, Kat, I talked a little bit with uh, with with Kat and, yeah, and yeah. Michael about um, what drew them to theater and how they got started. Yes. Um, I'd love to ask you the the same question and basically like why for you theater. Yeah. Um, I think, I mean, I was always a bit of a tyrant. I used to, like, direct my cousins and stuff in the cottage into a little place that I'd written just for the praise and praise is really important, mm -hmm. uh, as a kid. <laughs> um, but I think it was, I think it was theater, and I'm starting to move towards television now, but I think theater was just the fastest way to come up with an idea and present it to an audience. Because mm -hmm. you really don't need a lot, and I think that's the biggest common misconception about theater, is that, like, God, it takes so much to get a show up. No, it doesn't. It just takes a bunch of people who are willing to not get paid. <laughs> really, but that's it. Yeah, Hi. Like, yeah. um, and that, I mean, this is the first production that the, that Bruja has been involved that hasn't been a festival production mm. technically that is like a full equity production, mm -hmm. like and because we're not paying for it. Yeah. Um, so it's like I, I think, and there's something so beautiful about the immediacy of theater. Like it's it's all the time theater, but it's like working this working the way I think I would want to work in television and theater makes this process kind of special. Mm. No, <laughs> it's not nice me. Well, the question, the question should be you, but like, do you remember what first made you want to do theater? Aside from that, the, in, that immediacy, mm -hmm. when young Cat Sandler started writing or thinking about theater, what, what was it? I don't know. I, I used to write short stories, uh, and then and I would do those plays at, like, at our cottage, but then I, my first produced play was I adapted a book, uh, a children's book. I, it was an adaptation. It was called There's More Than One Way to Catch a Tent. And it was about a group of animals in the forest. And they learned that there are different ways to count to ten. Mm -hmm. I adapted it as a play. And I put my crush in the in the title role of the nice. lion. What you do? Grade six, yeah. And I directed a little workshop production for the whole school. And I really liked that. And then I kind of was like, no, I'm going to be a famous actor. So I'll just leave that alone for a bit. <laughs> but then the same kind of thing happened in high school. I did a I wrote and directed, starred and produced in a play called The Good Detective. It was a musical. Um, and that felt pretty great. I sold out the, the poor Alex, which was now is for teenies. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I kind of missed yeah. that space. It was a good space. Yeah, yeah it was great. And we didn't know. I mean, I've told some um, interviews before, but like, we, we walked in and it smelled like so much pot. And we were like, what is that <laughs> smell? Oh. And they were what like, that'll that? be $2,000 for three nights. And we were like, okay, here we go. <laughs> like, no idea what my yeah. was. Um, but yeah, and that, I, that, I think it just made sense. I really, I really loved, really liked audiences. And that's kind of been our thing at Brumaha from day one is like, we're doing this for those people, not for us. It's fun for us, but you put your audience first always. Mm -hmm. That's, I mean, that's one of those things that, that is, there was this period of time in the 90s where I would go to these gatherings of people who were making theater and the phrase that I would always hear is, I'm making art for artists. And I would always sit there raging silently at them, thinking like, art for artists, but you know, you're making theater, what about your audience? Well, I, don't think it's, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I mm -hmm. think it's that I, like, and I'm accused all the time of like, being super populist and making this like, like, pop, like, pop, like, not mm -hmm. what's the word I'm looking for? Pop culture? Pop yeah, culture. well, we can yeah. it, like, stuff yeah. that just feels poppy. And mm -hmm. I'm like, okay. <laughs> I mean, that's, I'm, but there's I'm nothing, okay with that. Yeah, I would be okay with that. It's, I mean, there's, there's no, nothing wrong with it. As long as it's good. are enjoying it, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, as, I think as long as it's got a certain level of consistency, I'm, I'm okay to be the person that you're like, okay, yeah, we can go see that because it'll at least it'll be fun. Do you, is there a particular approach that you take to not just writing but to producing a Brohaha show? Um, I, I, ooh, I think it depends. This is, this is very different because 
we're working with. And this one is this one is very different. But. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it starts with the pitch, and that's like goes all the way back to before I write something. I'm like, okay, I know that I have a slot in this time period. I know we're in this space. What do I want to see? Okay, we've done the or how many we've done the whole one that's liver. What's the elevator sentence for something that I want to see? Okay, mm -hmm. late night host. Uh, there's a Freudian slip on air. The shows. That's something that I can sell in a sentence. Mm. Not that one, that was perfect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm quitting. I, yeah, uh, it's, like, it's like, what's the one, what's the, what's the elevator pitch that gets someone excited? Mm -hmm. And then how do you promote around that? What's the image that, that makes people wonder what the show's about and want to go see it from that? What's the, what's the video that you put into ethos? And we, and we do a lot of social media marketing. Like That's been most of it from day one. Mm -hmm. So how do you tease photos of production? How do you do rehearsal photos? How do you build like, sound bites? How does all that kind of work? Yeah. That's all super important stuff that I think people don't think about mm -hmm. in terms of theater anymore, uh, or mm -hmm. at all, really. Um, I think slowly people are starting to realize it, but I know that, that Bruhaha does something that I think a lot of companies would, would love to do, like just in terms mm -hmm. of promotion. And well, and I think yeah. a, lot of, uh, a lot of companies, too, and I, I, I briefly worked as uh, in the PR department of a few uh, uh, theater companies. Mm -hmm. Uh, back in the day, and I noticed that a, there's a lack of uh, understanding of uh, like rules and policy of engagement for people using mm -hmm. social media. Like people understand now, especially in 2016, they're like, right, Twitter is important. People are on Facebook. Let's Snapchat. Sure, yes. okay. Yeah. Uh, should we be making vines? Should we be doing that? And it's like, okay, they're, they are aware of the tools, but there's a lack of um, study or, or knowledge about how uh, people sp and how specific demographics engage with those tools and why they're engaging with them. So it's not just about pumping out content. It has to be um, directed content. It has to be uh, content that understands what kind of audience you want to have. Your audience yeah. Is yeah. A huge deal. And it's also that people aren't, Tom, Tom and I did a TED talk, a TEDx talk, and we talked about this a lot. <laughs> Like we, people, you're competing for people's attention so hard. You have to speak in the vocabulary that you've been so accustomed. So like, mm -hmm. you look at the way TV and film is more marketed, and it's fucking slick. Yeah, it's absolutely. Cute. The photos are beautiful. Yeah, it's the teasers are sexy. Like you can't. I don't want to just put like if my if I'm doing late night, I don't want to put a picture, a little draw hand drawn picture of a TV on a poster. No, and that's not going to sell it mm -hmm. for me. Yeah. When I'm seeing when these HBO things shop, I like friend Leibovitz, Annie Leibovitz, one of them. Annie. Anyway, she's also know. pretty cool, yeah. I think. I'm not sure. Anyway, we're yeah. just defending all the way to this. But I think it's like, how do you, yeah, who, who, how do you lure an audience away from Netflix? It's pretty fucking hard. Yeah. And just saying, we're doing a play is not enough. No. no. Well, well, Tom, Tom McGee was on this podcast last year and talked about uh, HBO being yeah. sort of like an inspiration for how you would yeah. watch stuff. Totally, and I think like, well, that's that's what like all of our titles, like any like even yeah from title even yeah well like I wouldn't I don't think I'd call something like and then the wind ran through the barley. Ah. What Can I be in that one? <laughs> Can I be in that one? <laughs> <laughs> you hear me shredding my copy. Love sex money. Love sex money yeah, was the exactly. first one. Yeah. yeah, and we were like, what's it about? It's just about a sex robot ultimately. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think a lot of people have a if you build it they will come mentality. Yeah. Um, and, and that's not true. No. It's not true yeah. at all. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Well, exactly. And, and this is what I think hooks on to what you were saying before about making theater for audiences. Mm -hmm. Then um, you can't just say, like, I done did a thing. Come see the thing I done did. No. Like, people, people are, don't. why, as you said, why would they care? Um, if, if, I'm, if I'm not giving you a reason to care, then why should they automatically yeah. care just because I made something? I don't know. Like, it's like a two-year-old who takes a shit, and then it's like, come look at the poo I made. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> ah, okay, <laughs> great. I, I, do, I do think there's a lot of, there is a lot, a lot of that sort of thing. I made something so yeah. calm um, when there isn't enough reason. I know I see, I hear a lot of things, and I think to myself, I should go see that. Mm -hmm. It's like yeah. the obligation of going to see It's people. also the way you pitch it, right? Like when mm -hmm. we did, when we were doing Bright Lights, like I had really wanted to do, like that was kind of a, I think it was too subtle of a feminist piece in the end. But like that, I was like, I don't want to do a play about consent. Mm -hmm. I want to do a play about aliens that has subtones of consent. And mm -hmm. if you want to read them, and if you want to look for them, they're totally there. And if you don't, you can just watch a play about aliens. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and I think that's the thing, like uh, like using humor to talk about the hardest issues. Like there's mm -hmm. a lot of shit in this play. Mm -hmm. Like aging yeah. is like 
like this whole clusterfuck of a subject and yeah. it's difficult to deal with and I'm not I don't know if we're doing it sensitively enough but we're doing it mm-hmm. and that's something so people say you should be writing about like these big issues and it's like well I, I am I'm just doing it in hopefully what is a funny way mm-hmm. so that you don't have to see an issue play you can see yeah. a play yeah. and take find the issues that you connect with within it mm-hmm. yeah like if I if I if I want to watch someone on their soapbox I just log on to my Facebook feed and that's fine. Yeah. And sometimes yeah. I do. Sometimes I, I just want to be cleansed through the fire of anger and righteous indignation and uh, people saying, this is right and this is wrong. Here's what we need to be doing. Let's all be better people. Like, I get that. Mm-hmm. Um, but to be able to see a, a piece that is able to explore those themes and ideas in a way that is um, bigger than than just its need to talk about those things, that, yeah. that connects it to... You know, as you said, to uh, humor, to something ridiculous, to something uh, sad, and you are able to take people into these places where where they are confronting these terrible things, where you are engaging with the darker parts of the world and, frankly, ourselves. But you do it in a way where, at the end, you don't feel beaten over the head with this this hammer of. But I mean, maybe some people still will, but like you can't. You can't control no. that. Mm-hmm. Well, you can yeah. Yes, you can. Put it out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you definitely can. You definitely I think can. You have to yeah. at least entertain. Like, I don't want to see something and be beaten over the head with something. Right. I, if I learn something or if I, I come up with my somehow changed, I, I think entertaining is a better way. And that's what we kind of. That's yeah. the first thing we said. We were like, "What do we want to do? Okay, ultimately, first and foremost, we want people to leave having had a good time." We've been crying. Yeah, yeah. Like but that's still a good time. Yeah. That's, yeah. Still a good time. that's still a good time. Yeah, I don't want people to leave confused. No, no. That's yeah. What I, that's no. What I, when I live in Atlanta, I'm like, what happened? Speaking about leaving, I have to leave. I know that you do so, but thank you so. Thank much you very much. much. Yeah, yeah, thank you, thank you. Come see late night because it's fun. It's <laughs> really fun. <laughs> you guys keep talking. You have better things to say. Um, no, no. No, I know what it's like. Oh, buddy. I love you. <laughs> Remember, I love you. Can I ask you about the Neil Patrick Harris thing on the fringe? <laughs> oh, yeah. Was that awesome? It was awesome. He's great. He's yeah. so sweetheart. Really, really nice guy. We hung out a bit. People made a huge deal about it. Yeah, yeah people were into that. It's one of those yeah. like, any celebrity uh, connection people will make a huge deal out of. I mean, it's not like we call each other up for writing each other's hair now. Like, we're like... <laughs> no. People are like, are you his best friend? And I'm like, no, he's back in Hollywood. Yeah. Again, in New York. <laughs> like, yeah, no, obviously, we're Skyping every single day. I was day. just surprised he actually, like, not surprised that he came, but, I'm like, I was impressed that, that he, he was, came. He was going to come, like, he was actually looking for a thing to do genuinely, mm-hmm. and I was, I, he was like, so many people tweeted at me, and I was like, I know, I, I asked everyone to. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, he, he's a, he's, it's, I think it's pretty amazing. I, I like to hope that if any of us ever got that famous, we would still partake in Local art. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. I think that's yeah. somebody, especially when you go to a place that's also he's like alone in a hotel room in a city that's not his home. Yeah. Like either you can stay in a hotel at your hotel and room watch or, TV. Service, or you yeah. can go out. Yeah. yeah, and and see, like, and he's also like a theater guy, yeah. like, so of course, why why would he not want to check out a, a cool piece? But especially like, it's nice uh, for something as big as a fringe festival. Where he's like, yeah, I want to go see something. I don't have yeah. that much time. But then he saw three plays. Yeah. Yeah. But he, he saw three he's good plays. Yeah. And I, I kind Thanks, of like, Neil. I know you're not, listening. It's not like he's a guy who can just sort of stand in line at a fringe festival. So, no, we snuck him in. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. And that was, that was terrifying and fun. I'm sure it was all of those things. Yeah. Um, I, I, I don't even know. Like, There's so many things I would ask you about um, playwriting and things like that. And um, I'm just, there's so like I'm overwhelmed with the number yeah, of questions yeah. that I could ask you. Um, <laughs> but I think I will start with... Um, if 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 you were Cat Sandler, since I have two cats in the room, yeah. um, to describe any kind of pro, you said that you start with like your elevator pitch. Yeah. Are there I mean, I usually start with knowing that I have to do a play for some reason. Like I don't mm. usually start with like I have like I have a, I have some documents that are just like ideas and it's just titled with plays. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. Probably the best one was like I, when I went to Stratford Writers Retreat last year. I started working on four plays. And like a couple of them were things I had been thinking about for a while, and I just it was just time, like to I just had the time to sit down there, and I always work on more than one thing at once because I think they inform each other. Mm. But normally it would be like, I feel like doing a play. What space can we get? Oh shit, this is available. Okay, we have a month. Okay, what's hot right now? What's an idea? What who's around? Pardon me. <laughs> Thank you. 
Um, and yeah, I mean, I don't like now, it's a little bit more like I have, like I'm doing a show at Queen's University mm -hmm. coming up, uh, and they're like, what do you want to do? What, like, what show do you want to do? And I was like, I don't have one. I'll, what I'd like to do mm -hmm. is audition, see who's around, see who I have to write for, write something and kind of develop it with them, because it's going to, I mean, I'm sick of watching university students play like old people. Old people, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'd rather write it for, for them. Mm -hmm. um, like what Jordan did with Hogwarts World, which I thought was really cool. Yeah. Um, so I think it's more like a, what's what's happening in the world? Like, let's make money. I read that article and thought mm -hmm. about that, and I started as a short story, and then it became a play. Um, Liver, I started with just an image. I was like, what happens if you walk into the theater and there's just a body on a slab? Mm -hmm. Instead of that, okay, medical, white, okay, it's a hospital. Maybe it's a teaching hospital. Maybe it's, um, it's something, not the heart, no, it's not the liver. The liver's alcoholism. What does that mean? And that's kind of how it, yeah. it rolls. And then I talk it out with people, always. Mm -hmm. always. And that's where I get into huge arguments sometimes. I'll be like, I want to write this play about this. And so I'll be like, that's too touchy. And then I'll be like, let's mm -hmm. have a fight in the bar about it. Great. Um, yeah, the best place to fight. Do you, yeah. do you, do those co those conversations must inform what you eventually Absolutely, I, I take too many. I take too much advice because mm. um, I'm a people pleaser. I mean, and ultimately, I do sometimes. I'm just like, no, fuck that. That's that's mm. how that mm. what my idea is happening. But it, um, I really do. Th I just don't go. I can't write in a vacuum. I never could. Uh, like mm. even like what, listening today, I was like, of course that makes sense. It just sounds better. And I have to hear someone say it a few different ways before I can pick it up. Yeah. Especially when you're trying to make fairly naturalistic ballet. And now it's become even more like the number of people that talk at the same time and the level of intricacy and intercutting of, of stuff. I couldn't, I personally couldn't do this mm. by myself. Um, I need to have the, yeah. the yeah. meat puppets around. <laughs> and also so with the people in the room when we're like making these changes and we can we've gone through it on our feet so when yeah. we have it in the script it's like oh yeah yeah this this totally makes sense yeah. all these like brackets and slashes and, and like Kat and Lucy have both done shows with me so they're, they're they've kind of just stopped they're like we'll just learn it they're learning it in the room mm -hmm. everyone else is still a little bit like I should take my script home and they're like no there's no point <laughs> no, we'll have a new one it'll be fine um, but yeah I think yeah so my process is just like how do you make it cool like what is it? Yeah. What is it? Start with try to find a cool idea. Think about what my like whoever I consider to be my audience, and that and the coolest thing is that that audience is shifting. You know, like the Terran audience is very different from the people that came to the store. Yeah, from. yeah. Um, and like the Queen's audience will be very different too. Absolutely. Um, and the TV audience that I'm working for now is very different as well. Um, so yeah, I think it's just and, and the process is a little bit different every time, mm -hmm. but it's always about listening and, and being flexible, and it's 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 really fucking. Cool. Hard. Like, no one wants to hear you complain about it, but like no. to say, okay, you guys can change whatever you want. You can't then turn it off. So no. it's like it's like someone will be like, yeah, like I'll say this is cut, and I'll go, oh, thank God. And you're like, oh God, is it that bad? Like, <laughs> it's basically leaving your putting yeah. your heart on your sleeve mm -hmm. and having to be so open, which is why I agonize over casting because you just want to have a room with people that you trust. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, because it can. It, it's just like if there's one person mm -hmm. in in the cast, especially for yeah. a process as um, that's at, at once as like uh, you know versatile and, and uh, awesome and fun and like I don't know beefy as, as yours, <laughs> but there's still a fragility to it yeah. because mm -hmm. uh, all all the pieces matter. Yeah. You know, I think that I think I just quoted the wire. All the <laughs> pieces <laughs> matter. Yeah. It's overwhelming too sometimes when someone like you're, you think you found a group and someone says, "Can you try this?" And you're like, that's going to undo all the things. Mm. That idea now undoes that last hour we spent working to, to do. But sometimes it's better and sometimes it's not. Yeah. And you don't really get to be like, no, we tried your idea, but not yours. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, yeah. And it just, you know, it's, yeah, it's hard, it's hard, but it, it's so worth it for me. Um, and I don't know, like, with Mustard, I was really, like, I didn't direct it, but I was in the room the whole time. Ashley was so generous to let me do it. So I don't know how to write this kind of dialogue mm. on my own, really, without a workshop. It's interesting. I mean, you were talking about how you know you work you work with, with people. I I have heard a lot of, of, of authors talk about how you know they put themselves into a room and they do it alone. And I always think about how to get the community of of writing or out of writing. Yeah. Um, but for me, that's directing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I like I can lock myself in a room for a week and bang out a draft. Mm -hmm. But I'll, I'll call Tom and I'll like get my mom. Yeah. Like and even then, or sometimes, like even within that week, I'll have a few actors not in the play come over and read it out to my mom because um, I just need to hear it. Yeah, it's never you can never really know what you've written until you've heard it. Not with six voices. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and it's kind of like it, like now the process of like everything. It's 
like, how much can I keep on myself? Like, how fast can I write the first thing? Mm. How many how many constrictions can I give myself? So this is like, okay, commercials are three minutes in real life. So how close to a commercial length can I get this scene to be that's supposed to be taking place over a commercial? Right. So they're not gonna, three minutes is possible. But, <laughs> um, but like six minutes, that's doable. Yeah. And that's a lot to, to like, those constrictions are a lot. Or like, Red Lights has so many ideas in it, and it has to be 60 minutes. Mm -hmm. And everyone was, I was like, how, okay, if it's collaborating with men, no one can leave. So everyone has to be talking all the time. Right. So there's, you never, ever, ever get to drop the ball. And that's kind of what the, there's no backstage in the show. So, mm -hmm. and, yeah, and, right. and there's a whole other element of cameras, so it's kind of like you're writing things for the cameras to pick up as well. And it's really, it's, it's cool. It's fascinating. Really cool. It's fascinating. Yeah. What's it like, I mean, you, you've worked on a, on a Cat Sandler show before, Cat. Yes. Um, <clears throat> How is this show? I mean, there's all kinds of different elements. Uh, have you found more uh, freedom in this show, or is it, has it been a different process? Um, it's 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 been different um, in in some very very cool ways. Like as I had mentioned earlier, the start of the process was was way more like a writer's room, like solid, straight up. Mm -hmm. We're all sitting around a table. Um, Kat's got her computer plugged into uh, yeah, TV. This is different. Yeah, with an HDMI cable. So we're just there, okay, watching the changes and going through mm -hmm. our scripts and making decisions about like cuts or, or changing things oh, or like throwing jokes up. Too, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is which is really interesting. I um, I I'm I'm not great at that part. Like I'm not, I'm just too antsy, I guess. Like I. I, I, I pace when I'm thinking mm -hmm. my ideas out or, you know, but well, I think Nigel was talking about it. Nigel Downer, yeah. who's also in the show, who's a wonderful improviser and comedian and actor and all that. He's uh, the best. Um, uh, and just thinking like, well, we're used to just like being up there and like, you know, like verbally talking things out or if like we're thinking of ideas, I just like sitting down for a long period of time. It just, mm -hmm. I, I, it feels very um, stagnating for me. So, however, like once we got into the rhythm of that, I was like, okay, well, this is just what it feels like to sit down and, and really just be like writing and banging things out with a group of people. Okay, no problem. But it was like, oh, I can't wait to get on my feet. Now that we are um, on our feet and making those changes, it's interesting because the character that he played in Retreat was just so ridiculous. And like, there's still a lot of like, you know, heart and all that stuff, but I, it was just big. It was a big character. <laughs> um, and, and this one that I play isn't. Um, this, like, it's odd because I'm playing this comedian, but I'm very much one of the straight men in the show, mm -hmm. um, which is really difficult. But you really want to have a very funny straight man always. Oh, you're uh, right. No. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> The hard man. The man. Uh, one of them, uh, one of them hard men, eh? And that's the problem. I mean, with this one, too, there's like so, it's so back and forth that the straight man hat kind of goes, gets shifted. It does. You are, you are the, you are the straight man. Yeah, which, which is okay. Yeah. But it's also interesting because um, the way that like my character develops and the, the journey she goes on, you know, she's taking over this late night show and, you know, people keep telling her she's very funny, but... She's just like you can see why things start going off the rails. And as like as actor, as like a comedian, me as like actor, as Cat Let when I'm just like, no, I have to be the funniest person mm -hmm. in the room, uh, and I have to keep like offering things. And I'm like, well, no, um, you know, if we're, we're going through a certain scene and like it's supposed to be a bit awkward, I'm like, oh no, no, no. But Sarah, like my character would say this and this and this because that's funny and gets back up. Oh right, she's not supposed to do that. <laughs> oh, so it's also. Now I'm starting to shift the way that um, I, I I work in the room. It's because at first I came in with this idea. I'm like, oh, Sarah's a comedian. I'm just going to like act like a fucking comedian. But I'm like, oh, that's not what Sarah needs. And that's not what the play needs. She is still a comedian, yes. And she still has to be funny. But she's not funny in the way I'm funny. It's, like Kat, it's also true that Kat's offers are so hilarious. And Kat will take a joke and just show. Uh, you do a little bit of what Anna says. So you just run with it and you keep joking, joking. Yes. But for me, I'm like, no, that rhythmically, I don't want that because mm. everything is stacked, like yeah. Jenga. Right. So she'll go on a, a joke, at, like where maybe sometimes the fourth joke, like Tatooine, like that was maybe the fourth in a, in a series of jokes that you yeah. made. But she's just still talking. And I'm like, oh, no, we've lost. Now the rhythm's lost because you're still going off on yeah. your joke over there. It's also because I'm a yeah. selfish performer. And what we in the business <laughs> call selfish. selfish in this play. <laughs> but um, I think, too, like what's so nice to watch you is that people, Kat is constantly being asked to play the broadest characters, and I think this is 
This is maybe the closest to you, Kat. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like the last play did, I played a dance raccoon, and I was like, you know, that is me. Yeah. It is me. <laughs> but yeah, this, the, and that was actually kind of what, um, why I wanted the the part so much, but also why I, I was so terrified yeah. going into the first day because I'm like, how do I play it's hard, myself? Like, we're constantly, this, this character just gets shat on. Oh, the it's. Character. And I end up doing, I'll catch myself doing it in rehearsal too. I'm like, I'm so sorry. Yeah, like, there's no, there's no, it's that between us at all. No, like, no, it's you, fine. You, you can't, like, at the end of the day, I was just like, yeah, she's a whore. Yeah. Because I think T tweeted that. <laughs> Great. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm glad about yeah. that yeah. fact was that I know. Was there a point where you, were, you came into rehearsal, you were really excited to do this, and then suddenly you had the realization of how close the character was to you that it switched to fear? No, 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 no. It wasn't that at all. It was but, I. But it happened, I mean, in its initial infancy, yeah. after the, the 24 hour shoot, the judge um, for that protest. Yeah, uh, and it's, it's cool because the way they submit the, the scripts, there's no uh, name or gender or anything right. on it. Tell there was another script that was very similar in style to yours, uh, the, the two highest rated ones, because also using the slashes and also just the kind of yeah. humor. I'm like, it could be either one, but I also, uh, yeah, I think I rated yours like three points above <laughs> the other one, and they were both like very high. Uh, there you go. So yeah, I'd read that, and I was like, oh, this is, a, this is such a great script, and then also Kat had me over for a couple of those read-throughs with wine, just to go <laughs> and talk about it. Some of those it. were in the morning, too. Some of those were in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, for, for forcing alcohol on bit. That's not, nope, that doesn't, uh, always gladly accepted. Um, yeah, so I, I knew, I knew what it was mm-hmm. going in. Um, and I was excited, but like the, 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 the not fear, fear's not the right word, the, the hesitation or kind of a feeling of more responsibility mm-hmm. with, with creating this, with this character and playing it well and properly and, with a sense of like justice, I guess, to it's, what it it's is. It's so amazing to watch you kind of like not grow up, but like, <laughs> <laughs> to, to realize, like, to be making those, even in the last few days when we've been on our feet, I, I watch you like stifle the stifle the offer, like make the good offer, the one that, that you really care about, and then I should have done it right But to, to yeah. see you kind of settle into Sarah, yeah, that'll happen too as we start running it because I think, yeah, I don't think I realized she was as great until right now, really. Yeah. Oh no, that's definitely that's definitely who she is. It's very so now that I'm playing it from that angle, now that I'm exploring it from mm-hmm. from that angle, then I'm like, okay, now now it's not that I am trying to comedically win in a room. That's where I can't be like me. Yeah. Where um, and that is it's, it's a defense mechanism. You always want to. This you're, is so great. This is great for me. This is great for our process. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. You're you're yeah, we'll, we'll credit great. you. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's, uh, you know, um, I've said this before, it's like, you know, a comedian sees a punchline like, like a dog sees a baked ham. It's just gonna, it's just gonna growl, you know? So I, I, I want to do that and like, uh, but it's like, no, that's, um, if I am going to go for the punchline or try to be the funniest person in the room, how can I do it in a way that it fits within the, uh, the rhythm yeah. of cat show that still proves when other characters say, oh, you're very funny, the audience can be like, yeah, she is. But then also see how that instinct, when she's in front of the camera doing the show live, how she's like, yeah, that's funny, but that is so wrong. And that is not going to land for anybody else, even though intellectually it could be funny. It's also the difference of, like, like we're in this, like I was watching today, we're in alley staging. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's fine. But then it means that the best angle is an angle where no one is sitting. It's where the camera will be. Mm, yeah. So it's it's just it really changes like like the rhythm of something becomes more important because if you don't have something moving around looking to look at necessarily, then you really want to make sure everything checks out. And I like I I care about rhythm more than most people I know. Just in terms yeah. of I, I like to hear the pat- the patter. Yeah. 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 Feel the rhythm, feel the rhyme. Like, everyone cares about like all things <laughs> But that's like writing a yeah. that, that's like writing a stand up set. That's mm-hmm. like the you know you have that and in your joke mm-hmm. and you cut it and suddenly it goes from being like oh ha 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 to like that is hilarious. Mm-hmm. It is about that yeah. rhythm and especially if you're doing a show about comedy, mm-hmm. it's all in the timing. You you have to be that attuned to it absolutely. So it makes it more painstaking, makes it hard. That's why you know comedy's fucking hard. Yeah. But uh, mm-hmm. yeah, I think it's the right instinct. Yeah. In my opinion. Well. 
Thank you so much. Thank you so much.